to part two of the series, Waste Management and the Compost Cycle. Feed yourself, not the garbage can. My name is Dr. Jamie, and I'm an educator at Metro. In the last video, we realized that in the average garbage day, almost 30% of the bin contains food. This was contributing to methane gas production as the food decomposed at the landfill. Is there something else we could have done to reduce the amount of food that ends up in our garbage? Hmm. Let's go back to the beginning. Where does a food like an apple come from? How does it get to us? And what happens to it when we are done? There's a lot of steps that were needed to get that apple into your hand to eat. Time to grow, harvesting, processing them to put them into safe boxes, transportation, and handling at the store before it goes to your home. Food is important to humans because it gives us energy. It's part of our cultures, our family traditions. It's part of having a healthy habitat. Food is also important in respects to social justice, making sure all people have access, not just to any food, but nutritious food that they prefer personally and culturally. In a way, an apple is a gift from the earth. These gifts from our amazing planet are called natural resources, materials that occur in nature that we use to support life and meet our needs. Sometimes it's obvious to see them, like the apple tree or the metal for the truck, but some are hidden natural resources that need to be used to get that apple into your hand. It takes natural resources like water, land, energy created from fossil fuels, or perhaps the sun to move the food and power the store's lights, and human labor to harvest and maintain the fields. We want to make sure these gifts are not wasted. So where does food waste happen? Let's watch this one minute video about a food life cycle from the point of view of a strawberry. Now there are several ways in the harvesting, handling and processing, transportation and retail where the food could be damaged or rot before it could be consumed. But there's more possible food waste once it is picked up by consumers, which could be restaurants, cafeterias or home use. Like the strawberry in the video, fruits and vegetables are one of the most wasted food groups, partially because they may contain parts that we just don't eat like a banana peel. Also, they are at risk of rotting if they're not stored correctly or eaten on time. The same is true for seafood. Let's talk about these two phrases, food scraps and food waste. Do these phrases mean the same thing? What makes them different? Food scraps are the unavoidable waste products from food preparation, like carrot peels, apple cores, meat trimmings, or bones. Food waste is the disposal of food that was or is perfectly edible. In learning more about food waste at home, I was shocked to find out that 20% of the average American family's groceries doesn't get eaten. That's like bringing home five bags of groceries and placing one straight into the garbage. That can't be right. Surely I don't waste that much food. But when I was getting ready to cook dinner, I noticed some spoiled food in my kitchen. I had stored the tomato too close to the apples, and by the time I was going to use it, it was rotten. 
Then I found my celery had been stored in the back of the fridge. I don't know why, and it was wilted. I was sad this food was not going to get eaten by my family. It was food waste. Now, I suddenly remembered my grandma, who was actually amazing at making sure she didn't waste food. She probably knew a lot more than me about how to store items and had a knowledge of different recipes that can be used items that may not look perfect enough to eat fresh. I obviously need to learn more about different ways to reduce food waste. Luckily, there are many simple eco actions that can help reduce this waste. The first one is planning ahead. Easy steps like checking what's already in your kitchen so that you don't accidentally buy too much. Making a list of items for specific meals so that you use them before they go bad. And my favorite, making sure you don't go to the store hungry as you're more likely to buy extra food that you weren't planning on eating. Another eco action is learning how to store your food right. Like from my example of the tomato, I needed to learn that the tomato should be stored at room temperature away from sunlight until ripe and not have them touch other fruit. You can also learn new recipes like making breadcrumbs from stale bread. One of my favorites is placing a reminder of which food items need to be eaten soon. This eco action is really easy. Talk about food waste. Share your food likes and dislikes so your family can be clear on what you prefer to eat so that food isn't wasted. The fourth one is to remember to save your food scraps. These can be composted at home in a worm bin, which we'll talk about in the next video, or be collected by garbage haulers in some areas. You can also complete a waste audit or exploration to collect data on what items end up in your garbage. So let's pause the video. I'd like you to write down one idea from this list that you already do that helps reduce food waste and write down one idea that you might want to try in the future. This is called a waste hierarchy. It's a useful tool to figure out what actions best protect our planet or community as we think about reducing food waste. We can rank these actions from least favorable to most favorable. At the bottom is landfill. Most of the fruit was used, but the remainder went to the landfill and produced methane as it decomposed. The landfill can make electricity from the methane, but it also takes extra resources to build the methane wells and time and effort to run the machines. One step better is recycling or composting, nature's way of recycling food scraps into super dirt. This can be done in a home worm bin or in a bin that's picked up by garbage haulers. While this is better than having the food scraps go to landfill, it does use natural resources like fossil fuels to transport the bin technology to process it, and time for the food to decompose. The next level is reuse. This includes sharing good food that may be thrown away or learning new recipes for fruit that may be a little bit overripe. Another way to reduce food scraps is feeding it to animals like chickens or pigs. One level up is reduce, only taking food if you're going to eat it all. Now you know your body best, if you know that you're only hungry enough to take one bite of the apple, maybe save it for later. Also, if you have leftovers, make sure to store them well and remember to eat them. The top level is my favorite, reimagine. We are reimagining right now. We are learning new facts, making connections between our actions and the garbage we create, and possibly brainstorming better ways to reduce food waste. Here's an example. In the past, when I cut the base of the celery off, I put the base into my compost. But I was taught at a local school that you can place the base into a bowl of water and it will regrow. I was able to replant my celery. Another reimagine is people creating databases or apps to connect excess food to groups or people who could use it. The Food Rescue Program has already saved 64 million pounds of food from the landfill. 
And in some areas, restaurants can use the Too Good To Go app to offer extra meals at the end of the day to people for 50% off. A final example of reimagine has happened right here in Portland, reconnecting to support our communities, working together to find and move nutritious food to people and animals who need it. Reconnection can also mean talking about ways to reduce food waste with your family, your friends, and classmates, sharing what you know and working together to brainstorm action plans. I wonder, what will you reimagine? In the next video, we'll be talking about how you can use the compost cycle, nature's way of recycling food scraps in your school or home. If you or your class come up with a new reimagine that you're already doing or are planning on testing, we would love to hear about it. You can contact us at our website. See you in the next video.